Right now at six, it is one of the biggest gifts in the history of UW-Madison, how a $100 million deal with Foxconn will help the school. More rain and thunderstorms are possible in Dane County the next two days. We have live team coverage tonight as flooded communities in Dane County prepare for the worst and hope for the best. This is News 3 at 6. Thanks for joining us. Flooding remains a concern in Dane County tonight as more rain is forecast in our region. A week ago at this time, western Dane County was dealing with historic rainfall. One man died as a result of flooding when his car became stuck in rising water. The flooding has caused more than $100 million in damages. Roads are still closed in the county, including several in the Madison area. This is the updated flood map released by the city. Blue areas could see flooding from Lake Monona. Purple areas could see flooding from lake levels and heavy rain. Streets in green are known to experience flash flooding during storms. Meanwhile, other communities are trying to clean up from all the water. We have live team coverage of the flooding in Dane County. Plus, we are also monitoring more rain for tonight and tomorrow. We start with Amanda Quintana live in Madison this evening. Amanda? Yes, well, some good news here, actually. Lake Mendota is actually down today by half an inch. That means it's two and a half inches down from its peak. That was about on Tuesday. But with this rain that is on the way, many people, city officials, county officials, even scientists are paying close attention to these levels. The rain we saw today, that's not the end of it. If we get a little bit more rain, it's predicted on Tuesday night, it's still going to add to this massive water that's slowly moving through the system. With already high lake levels and another round of rain on its way, city and county officials are trying to speed up the water moving down the channel. The University of Wisconsin hydrologist Eric Booth says if we see another huge rainfall like we did last Monday, there's a pretty high risk we could lose the dam at Tenney Park. They do have that little bit of a buffer to absorb even a pretty good size rain event at this point, but it's it's cutting it pretty close. The system is not designed to handle these really, really big rain events one after another. Mayor Paul Soglin is hopeful that won't happen, saying contingency plans to evacuate probably will not be needed. If we'd got heavy rains Friday, which we didn't, if we'd had heavy rains last night, which we didn't, it would have taken on top of that a three to five inch rain in the next 24 hours to cause concern. But he says in order for our area to be able to absorb another heavy rainfall, we need five to six dry days in a row across the Ahara watershed. Covers like Arlington, DeForest, Windsor, parts of Sun Prairie. So this whole area eventually drains into Lake Mendota. An area where the lake only covers 8%. The land area, mostly to the north and a little bit to the west and east of Lake Mendota, that's the total watershed area. And if there's rain that falls within that area, that eventually reaches the lake. Booth tells me that the real issue is that the lakes, it takes a while for them to respond to these really heavy rains. So we're really seeing a delayed response right now. So the hope is that over these next couple of days, the rain is not as intense as it was a week ago. Right, keeping our fingers crossed. Amanda Quintana, live downtown. Amanda, thank you. Dane County has aquatic weed cutters in the Hare River today. These boats pull weeds out of the river bottom. That allows for increased flow. The county says workers have pulled 270 loads, which it said doubled the flow of water and allowed levels to stabilize. The county says this is the main way it can control the levels along the Yahara chain. The city is still offering free sand and ready to fill sandbags at numerous locations. You can get that help uh, at a lot of cities parking parks along the city parking lots on East Main and on McKenna Boulevard. The city of Monona is offering sandbags for people who live there as well. Homeowners in flood prone areas are being encouraged to put sandbags as close to a house's foundation as possible to avoid trapping water up against your structure. And we have that sandbag information at channel3000.com. And let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti now with the latest information on the forecast. Gary? 
Well, Charlotte, any additional rainfall is going to cause problems for some areas, especially north and east of Madison and still over parts of western Dane County. We have alert days in the forecast for tonight and tomorrow for not only the threat for heavy rainfall, but also the potential for some severe weather. High winds, hail, also a possibility, uh, mainly north of Madison later tonight, uh, but also just about anywhere across southern Wisconsin from late tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow evening. Now, flash flood watch has been issued until 7 a.m. Wednesday morning for Dane County and areas to the north and to the east. As we look at visible cloud track, you can see thunderstorms developing very rapidly in big clusters across Minnesota and Iowa, sweeping eastward toward Wisconsin. As we check out the 48-hour precipitation estimate, areas north of Milwaukee got hit hard last night with three to six inches of rain, so we haven't been alone in uh, getting the heavy rainfall. Right now, things are pretty quiet around here, but just out to the west, you can see a line of thunderstorms sweeping across much of Minnesota into extreme northern Iowa. Severe thunderstorm watches have uh, been issued just to the north of our viewing area through the evening hours. There's an enhanced risk of severe thunderstorms uh, north of the Dells, a slight risk here in the Madison area, and tomorrow that slight risk shifts farther to the south for at least a line of thunderstorms moving on through. Low temperatures this morning started out in the middle 70s because of the muggy weather. High temperatures today mid to upper 80s, and right now we're still near those high temperatures of the day. When you factor in those dew point temperatures that are in the lower to middle 70s, heat index values are up into the 90s, and as we check out our forecast for tomorrow, look for another round of thunderstorms storms by mid to late afternoon with a high of 86. That's your first alert forecast. Gary, thank you. A popular Madison business is still closed today due to flood damage. Schweigler Parktown lanes took on significant water in last week's flooding. The bowling lanes are bent and warped and walls in the basement need to be replaced. But management at the entertainment center isn't beat down. They say they are dedicated to getting it up and running. See it in this condition, it's sad. Um, but the best part about it We've got customers, we've got employees that have been coming out of the woodwork to help us. They're, they're helping put it together, they're, they're supporting us, so we just can't wait to reopen for them. The bar and kitchen in the building weren't badly damaged and they hope to open after Labor Day. Businesses are slowly but surely picking themselves back up after last week's flood. Many businesses did not have flood insurance. Many lost everything and have a long road ahead. Jamie Perez spoke with the people at Gilda's Club in Middleton who say there are more than 4,000 cancer patients are currently without the care they need. Jamie? That's right. Well, they do have a lot of people on standby right now, as you just said, but they say they're working to rebuild as quickly as they can so that none of their patients have to face cancer alone. You can imagine how these guys must be feeling. Tearing apart a business that provides emotional support for cancer patients. Gilda's club was devastated by floodwaters, and now they have no choice but to rebuild from scratch. You can see that the worst of the devastation was in our basement. There's an orange line about halfway down the stairs where that was the high water mark. That was the executive director you just heard. She's one of the backbones of this place that provides emotional support so those with cancer don't have to face it alone. We have a workout space where um, when members were dealing with the, the muscle loss that comes from their treatment, they would come in here and work out. And of course, all of the equipment except for the heaviest has been moved out so far. Everything in their basement is gutted, from the walls to the insulation, everything. But even through it all, through all of this, the support in this place goes both ways. I've had countless people reach out to us that are dealing with their diagnosis right now, but honestly, we've had a lot of our members who are facing their own difficult challenges that are reaching out to us that want to help us. Ten years ago, this place opened to serve those who have cancer. Even though they have nothing left, they're powering through it for everyone. I know that it's stressful, it's difficult, it's emotional, and then I think about our seven and eight year olds who don't even fully understand the impact of cancer or what this might mean to their family or why it's happened to their family and the stress that comes with that, the stress that they deal with in school, at home, and I wanna make sure that we rebuild for them. And as I mentioned, they are working on getting a temporary location to provide their services while they work on rebuilding. They say it could be as late as January before they open their business again. In the meantime, if you are a patient there or seek their services, they will contact you by email or update their Facebook and Twitter accounts with information going forward, and they will be sure to post when they have a temporary location set. I remember when they opened the red door for the first time those years ago. We wish them the best. Jamie, thank you. And News 3 will continue to monitor the flooding in Dane County and provide updates both on air and online. 
at channel3000.com. Still to come on News 3 at 6, former Badger J.J. Watt is giving an update on his $41 million donation after Hurricane Harvey. And speaking of large donations, Foxconn giving the UW one of its largest gifts in school history. What this partnership is all about, just ahead. Welcome back. The Taiwanese tech company Foxconn is investing $100 million in UW-Madison. Well, UW hoping this new partnership will provide new opportunities for both students and staff. Rose Schmidt joins us now to explain a little more on this, Rose. That's right. Now, you may, may, may remember that Foxconn broke ground on a new plant in Mount Pleasant this summer to produce display screens for small electronics. Today, the top company's top executives say they want to become long-term community members of Wisconsin, including here in Madison. There are a few major components of Foxconn's investment including a new research facility on the engineering quad and a new science and technology institute that will be based in southeastern Wisconsin but also have a presence here in Madison. University officials say it will hopefully lead to development in medical science, computer science, and other fields. But that's just the beginning. We want to work together on research related to robotics, autonomous vehicles, medical imaging, even exploring new cancer treatments with using ginseng. Chancellor Blank says the goal is that once students graduate from UW, they'll have job opportunities either with Foxconn or other top tech companies. The investment from Foxconn could also lead to hiring more research faculty members at UW-Madison. And with Foxconn's gifts of $100 million, the university also plans to raise an additional $100 million. This is part of a $3.2 billion campaign, which is focused on funding research into engineering and other fields. Big investments in those fields. Rose Schmidt reporting tonight. Rose, thank you. Coming up, still ahead at 6, pretty cool honor for the Willie Street Co-op in Madison. And beloved Badger J.J. Watt provides an update on Houston one year after Hurricane Harvey. And in weather, more showers and thunderstorms are on the way later tonight into tomorrow. Some of those could be severe and produce heavy rainfall. I'll have your first alert forecast in just a few minutes.
Madison police say there could be a bad batch of heroin on the streets right now. Officers have responded to six overdose calls in the past 48 hours, and they say spikes like this typically mean dealers are selling heroin mixed with fentanyl. The State Department of Justice is teaming up with Hometown Pharmacy to offer another way to safely dispose of unwanted prescription drugs in Wisconsin. It's through these drug deactivation pouches. You simply add water and throw it in the trash. The DOJ says many drug abusers first start with unwanted painkillers from a friend or family member. To get a pouch, simply ask a hometown pharmacist. They will also be offered to those with short-term painkiller prescriptions. Work is scheduled to begin this week on rebuilding Main Street in Sun Prairie. Governor Walker approving an emergency contract for more than a million dollars to rebuild the intersection at Main Street and Highway 19. Construction is expected to be finished by the end of November. Madison's Willie Street Co-op is now one of the largest cooperatives in the country. Last week, the community-based grocery cooperative passed 35,000 members. The three stores in the Madison area generates around $52 million in sales. The Old Fashioned is offering its full menu today. There was a fire at the restaurant back in June. It's since been offering a limited menu while it worked on rebuilding. Restaurant employees thanked customers on Facebook today for being patient during the rebuild. A year after Hurricane Harvey, former Badger defensive end J.J. Watt giving an update on those in the Houston community. J.J. raised almost $42 million through GoFundMe after that storm, making it the largest crowdsourced fundraiser in world history. Watt tweeted the money has helped support cleanup and repairs to more than 6,000 homes, daycare centers, and after-school programs. It's also provided 26 million meals, along with physical and mental health services to more than 6,000 people. An incredible effort. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti joins us now, and uh, all eyes are up into the sky. We're just watching to see what happens now, mm -hmm. you know, where the heaviest storms eventually end up, and who gets the severe weather, who gets the heavy rain, and who misses out altogether. But uh, you can see the upcoming alert days for tonight, for the potential for some strong to severe thunderstorms north of Madison. Some of those could produce heavy rain as well. And then tomorrow, pretty much across most of our viewing area from late afternoon into the evening hours, a line of showers and thunderstorms moving on through with the severe weather potential. Flash flood watch in effect until 7 a.m. Wednesday for Dane County and areas to the north and east. This is the area that's been hit hardest over the last week and a half. Of course, we had <clears throat> the Watertown area hit about a week and a half ago, Western Dane County a week ago, and then uh, uh, parts of uh, Dodge County over the last few days. And last night it was uh, Washington and Ozaki counties getting about three to six inches of rain. You can see how that showed up over the 48 hour precipitation estimate. Fortunately, over the last couple of days, the showers and storms <clears throat> dropped the least amount of rain over southwestern Wisconsin. So we'll have to see where the next batch ends up. But <clears throat> much of northern and eastern Wisconsin had one to three inches of rain in those localized three to six inch amounts. And <clears throat> more showers and storms are on the way. A severe thunderstorm line moving through uh, the Twin Cities, heading up into northwestern Wisconsin. A little bit of development to toward the south here to just north of Waterloo, Iowa. Now everything right now moving to the northeast. A second severe thunderstorm watch has been issued just north of our viewing area until 1 a.m. for northeastern Wisconsin, including Green Bay. But the tail end of this line could affect areas north of the Dells over the next few hours. Fortunately, these storms are moving pretty quickly, so the main threat is probably going to be wind. Uh, the uh, enhanced area for the uh, severe weather outlook from the Storm Prediction Center north of uh, the Dells, a slight risk of severe thunderstorms into Madison and a marginal risk to the south. But you can see wind is the main threat. High wind probability within 25 miles of a point. This area, about a 45% chance of that happening. Uh, the hail threat, much less, uh, about a 15% chance in the yellow shaded area. Tornado threat, still there, about a 5% chance over much of northern and central Wisconsin. These would be short-lived tornadoes within the line of thunderstorms. Then tomorrow that severe weather threat shifts farther to the south with a slight risk through southern Wisconsin. And then of course it's the rain we look at. Uh, the potential from the computer models about one to two inches generally over southern Wisconsin. This is through early on Thursday morning, but we also could see some localized three, four, and five inch amounts in heavier thunderstorms. Just hard to say exactly where those areas are going to end up. So our forecast includes that flash flood watch for Dane County and areas to the north and east till 7 a.m. Wednesday morning. For tonight a low of 74. Best chances of thunderstorms north of Madison. Any of those could produce gusty winds and heavy rain. Tomorrow's high 86. Should be dry for much of the day, but strong thunderstorms developing late in the afternoon. On future track, the models keep the, most of the thunderstorms tonight north of Madison. A break during the day tomorrow, and then by late afternoon, you can see the storms forming out to our north and west as highs reach the middle 80s. Those storms come through tomorrow night. By early on Wednesday morning, the rain will be ending, and then Wednesday, much cooler with clouds and high temperatures only in the upper 60s. Again, those rainfall amounts, one to two inches, localized heavier 
amounts. Seven to 10 day forecast. We'll be back to the middle 70s on Thursday as sunshine returns. Next chance of thunderstorms late Friday into Saturday. A thunderstorm chance on Labor Day. Temperatures next week mainly in the low to mid 80s. Camp Randall Stadium is pretty quiet right now, but that all changes Friday night at 8. The story's coming up in sports. News. The big week is here, the game week for the Badger football team. Western Kentucky will play at Camp Randall Friday night at 8 as the Badgers kick off their 130th season of football in Madison. Camp Randall, pretty quiet right now, but when 80,000 fans show up Friday night, the joint will be jumping. For returning guys like Jonathan Taylor, there will be some butterflies, but he knows what it's all about from last year. For many others, opening night could be a little more nerve-wracking. be a little bit more people, um, but just stay poised and, and trust. Trusting the preparation that they that they got them to that point, you know, um, because there's a you know it's going to be the fans, the atmosphere, the environment be a little bit different. Well, I think you get out of camp mode a little bit, and um, you know guys start to get their legs back, and uh, the energy gets back up. So it's it's a fun time. I mean, especially being a uh, Friday night game, you know, a lot of people are just you know excited to get things going. The Packers have their fourth and final preseason game Thursday night in Kansas City. Don't forget it's Thursday night this week. Saturday, then the big day. That's when General Manager Brian Gutekunst has to have the final roster down to 53. Will quarterback Brett Hundley keep his spot on the roster, or how about a new wide receiver like Jamon Moore? This, of course, the first time Gutekunst is the guy who has the final say, taking over for his mentor, Ted Thompson. Gutekunst says he's ready for that uh, rather unpleasant task of telling players they've been cut. It's never a fun time during that time because you, you, you know how hard these guys have worked, what they've put into it. Um, to you guys' point, there's going to be guys that you're going to have to let go that you know are viable NFL players that may be able to help you sometime, and, and some of them may, may end up coming back to you as well. But um, uh, I think, you know, I've been up here for six years and I've been through that process, um, you know, the way we've gone through it. Um, this won't be the first time I'm sitting across from a player talking to him about that. 
With the Badger football game Friday night, we won't have a Prep Mania High School football game of the week telecast. We'll be back with the game of the week on Friday, September 7th, when DeForest visits Wanakee. Today at Maple Bluff Country Club, almost everyone is wearing pink. It's the ninth annual Crusade for a Cure, hosted by the Edgewood Girls Golf Team. Man, what a setting with the state capital in the distance. And what an event. 20 schools play in the tournament, and more importantly, raise money for breast cancer and melanoma research at UW Carbone Cancer Center. And they do it all sorts of ways. We sold super fan shirts and we ended up selling 224 as a team. And we raised $1,438. And we sold tea signs. Uh, we sold 34 signs for a total of $6,600. You're, you're doing it together where you're not just teams against each other and you know then you get the whole community feel and partnership and and I think the girls really really um, enjoy that they're all in and so it's a it's a great learning skill for their life. In the last eight years the event has raised seventy thousand dollars for cancer research this year they've already raised over seventeen thousand dollars a lot of big eight and badger conference teams are playing but there are also teams from Bayport and Notre Dame from Green Bay Cedarburg and Franklin near Milwaukee and Osseo Fairchild too so quite a day. Kudos to them. Yeah. Doing, Doing something good. There you go. Mm -hmm. right, there you go. Quick final check with Gary. Well we're continuing to watch the rainfall potential again about one to two inches expected over about the next 24 to 36 hours. Storms just starting to move into the areas around La Crosse they might clip the northern parts of our viewing area. Keep an eye on those, but more to follow for tomorrow. Thanks for joining us. Have a great evening. We'll see you back here at 10. Download the new Channel 3000 app and get alerted on your mobile device the minute news breaks. Wherever you go, be the first to know with Channel 3000.